one of the ways that people fail to tell Rosa Parks' story fully and properly, I think, is that we simplify her entire uh, life to this one moment. There's even further. We can go further into Rosa Parks' life after um, after the civil rights movement, you know, all these things that she's accomplished since, uh, and we'll get there. But uh, when most people hear about or interact with the name Rosa Parks, I think it can be summed up in this T-shirt. It's usually a black T-shirt with white lettering, and it just says N-A-H, nah, dot, and then it's attributed to Rosa Parks. It's a quote from Rosa. Oh, uh, okay, okay. You know? And I think yeah, like like get up and go to the back, and she exactly. says nah. She says nah. Okay. And I appreciate that. Yeah. I think it's clever. I think it, it demonstrates defiance yeah. um, and resistance. Dignity, dignity. Dignity, dignity. an assertion of dignity. Yeah. And I love that. And at the same time, so it has the benefit of all that in this one, one three-letter word. And at the same time, uh, if that's all you take away from it, it can seem that it can seem like she, it seems like that's her whole life and her whole contribution. And it's not true. It right. also, it also. There was could, this one moment of spontaneity that exactly. it didn't, it wasn't planned out. And if there's no bus boycott that follows it, then exactly. we're not talking about Rosa Parks today. You know what I mean? Like there's just no, it would just be one, it would be this moment. It might've been interesting at the time or whatever, but it would have, it would have made the history books if you don't have a, a super well organized, unbelievably committed. I'm sure you're about to get into this um, bus boycott that follows it. We don't have a nah t-shirt in 2020 without that. Exactly. Yes, it it required the follow up effort of the NAACP, the rise of a brilliant uh, young pastor by the name of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., um, who would come in and help shepherd uh, a new movement that that would change the entire complexion of the country. So, Jesse, yeah, I I, um, I called up Bill Fletcher. Uh, Bill Fletcher Jr. is an activist and a labor organizer. He's a formerly a president of the Trans Africa Forum and the author of, of three books. And he was really, really um, charitable with his time and allowed me to ask him some questions. We talked about strategy. And, and here's, a, here's a clip. When you're going up against an opponent, you have to figure out where are they vulnerable and why. The idea of throwing... Uh, let's call it spaghetti on the wall and see what sticks is not a very good approach to tactics and strategy. Um, it's best to try to figure out when you're identifying an opponent, where are they weakest and for what reason? So uh, going after public transportation is very different in 1955 than going after uh, a segregated restaurant. Why? Because the segregated restaurant was private property. And, and given the, the uh, mythology around private property in the United States, it becomes a harder target in 1955. Um, the issue of public transportation, however, is more vulnerable. Why? Because it is the public. The tax dollars of everybody in Montgomery was going towards public transportation. Therefore, a righteous demand of democracy resonates. You know, one of the things that I've often heard when right-wingers respond to our protests around police brutality, they'll say something like, well, why are you doing this? There's more black folks that are killed by each other than by the police. So what's all the hubbub, bub, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the argument. Right. And what that misses is that it's, it's not a justification for criminal violence against African Americans by other African Americans, or by anyone else for that matter. It's that the police are a public entity. As someone uh, said in something I was reading the other day, there is an implied contract between the police and the public. And, and the contract is that the public is to expect that there will not be rampant rogue violence carried out by a public entity against the people. It's a basic demand of democracy. You can't exercise that demand over the Cosa Nostra. 
You can't exercise that demand over the Russian mafia. You can't exercise that demand over some nutcase African-American in the streets of Chicago or a member of a gang. That's a different dynamic, which is not to let those groups off the hook. It's to say that a different set of tactics have to be applied there. But when you're dealing with the police, it's a public entity. And I think that that was a very important lesson that was learned. I'm going to use that from now on. Like when, when, when we talk about like why, why such an interest in police violence as opposed to other violence. And it's, it, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like there's a couple of layers to what he's saying there. You know, it's representative. It's like, a, you know, violence, violence is visual. Violence is, is, is obvious. Violence is this thing that, that everybody can see that, that's clear. So it's when, it's when you see a disproportionate amount of it coming from a state entity, then it's, it's representative of something, right? And, um, and so it, it makes sense that, that, that you go after that. And it's, it's totally clear. I remember when, I remember when I was living in DC, when we met and, um, there was a protest against community violence, against, uh, violence that was going on in, uh, Southeast. And I remember walking up to the guys in Southeast DC and I remember walking up to the guys that were marching and it was like, and they were, they were yelling, we can't take it anymore. We can't take it anymore. Something along those lines. And I remember like kind of going up to them and just sort of being like you know what's the as a, i was working as a journalist at the time like what's what's the goal here like what's the target and it's it's just like i don't know we just we don't know we could we just can't take it anymore we just it's and it's like not it's so much harder to fight something like that um it's like who who do you who do you go to who are you marching in front of what and uh and so that that makes a lot of sense to me and then the other thing i was thinking about um with the bus boycott Another thing in terms of strategy that makes it effective is vis it's visually effective in the sense that the people of Montgomery for how long did it last? Like a year? It was long. Over right? a year. Over a year. Yeah. Over a year. They watched their black neighbors or maybe they weren't living in the same neighborhood, I guess. Um, but the, the black citizens of Montgomery for over a year walked and or loaded into cars or like so there was just this there's no way you could be out and about in montgomery during that year plus and not know that this is going on because you're just you're seeing it all the time people walking people loading into cars and just this um it, it would have been unavoidable it would have been very visual that that this was happening and that and that it was, and that people weren't folding you know that they were continuing i have a quote from the leaflet that was distributed for the bus boycott. It says, we are asking every Negro to stay off the buses Monday in protest of the arrest and trial. You can afford to stay out of school for one day. If you work, take a cab or walk, but please, children and grownups, don't ride the bus at all on Monday. Please stay off the buses on Monday. And what's crazy, it rained that day, but the, the community persevered. You know, They did the carpools, they figured it out. And it was a successful bus boycott. And it showed sometimes, you know, it, the plan wasn't to do a full year. The plan was to do it just that day. But there's something about like making, you know, setting a goal and achieving it. And even if that goal, I won't even call that small because that's not a small goal. That's a difficult thing to pull off. But they achieved it. And that victory, these victories led to, to so many more victories that we continue to, to, to talk about and know today.